Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited about this video, mostly because it is books that I'm excited about for 2020. Today I'm going to be mentioning all the books that are coming out next year in 2020 that I'm super excited for. Not all of these are by authors that I've already read, so some of them will be first time authors for me, but the synopsis sold me and many times the covers also sold me because I am a little bit of a hoe for a good cover. I have all of these books listed in a separate folder on my Goodreads, so I'll just be using that. There are currently only 10 books that I'm super hyped for. There are others coming out next year, but you know, I'm neutral about them. <laughs> but these ones are ones that I'm definitely, I want to read as soon as they come out. The first one that's coming out in May 2019. Oh my gosh, 2020, silly bully. <laughs> oh, okay, the first one is the 30 Names of Night by, Z by Zane Yochada. So Zane is the author of A Map of Salt and Stars that I also read this year, which was a beautiful, beautiful story about Syrian refugees. And his next book comes out in May, and I'm so hyped for it, I'm definitely going to read it immediately. Let me tell you what it's about. Five years after a suspicious fire killed his Orthonologist mother, a closeted Syrian-American trans boy, sheds his birth name and searches for a new one. He has been unable to paint since his mother's ghost has begun to visit him each evening. As his grandmother's sole caretaker, he spends his days cooped up in the apartment avoiding his neighborhood, Masjid. I don't know what that is, so I'll have to look that up. Um, his estranged sister and even his best friend, who also happens to be his longtime crush. The only time he feels truly free is when he slips out at night to paint murals on buildings in the little thriving Manhattan neighborhood known as Little Syria. One night, he enters the abandoned community house and finds the tattered journal of a Syrian-American artist named Leila Z, named Leila Z, I cannot read, who dedicated her career to painting the birds of North America. She famously and mysteriously disappeared more than 60 years before, but her journal contains proof that both his mother and Leila Z encountered the same rare bird before their deaths. In fact, Leila Z's past is intimately tied to his mother's and his grandmother's in ways he never could have expected. Even more surprising, Leila Z's story, story reveals the histories of queer and transgender people within his own community that he never knew. Realizing that he isn't and has never been alone, he has the courage to officially claim a new name, Nadir, an Arabic name meaning rare. Mm. As unprecedented numbers of birds are mysteriously drawn to the New York City skies, Nadir enlists the help of his family and friends to unravel what happened to Leila Z and the rare bird his mother died trying to save. Following his mother's ghost, he uncovers the silences kept in the name of survival by his own community, his own family, and within himself, and discovers the family that, and discovers the family that was there all along. Featuring Zayn Yochadar's signature magical and heart-wrenching storytelling, The Thirty Names of Night is a timely exploration of how we all search for and ultimately embrace who we are. That was a mouthful, but I'm so excited for this book to come out. Um, Zayn Yochadar is part of the LGBT community and he, he has made sure that um, we know that this book does have people of color as well as trans people. So I'm so excited for this book. It is by an own voices author, which is always something that's just a bonus. I'm so excited for this one to come out in May 2020. And also I'd highly suggest checking out his previous book, uh, A Map of Salt and Stars. It is a phenomenal book and worth it. It's totally worth it to read it. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about, I just saw the cover for this book and I was like, okay, 2020 is serving us some sexy covers. I don't mean sexy, I just mean like amazingly beautiful artistic covers that we need. Anyway, the next one is part of a series, so it's the first book in the series. The series is called Deathless and the first book is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. Um, I believe this author is from Sierra Leone. So, what is this book about, you ask me? So this one is actually a young adult fantasy. Let me read you the synopsis. 16-year-old Deka lives in fear and anticipa anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she will become a member of a village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Deka prays for red blood so that she can finally feel like she belongs. But, on the day of her ceremony, her blood runs gold, the color of impurity, and Deka knows she will face a consequence worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to her with a choice, stay in the village and submit to her fate or leave to fight for the emperor in an army of ghosts just like her. They are called a lucky near, mortals with a rare gift. No, sorry, immortals. <laughs> near immortal. She's near immortal with a rare gift. And they are the only ones who can stop the empire's greatest threat. 
Knowing the dangers that lie ahead, yet yearning for acceptance, Deka decides to leave the only life she's ever known. But as she journeys to her capital to train for the biggest battle of her life, she will discover that the Great Walled City holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem to be, not even Deka herself. This one again, it comes out in May 2020. It is um, West, a West African inspired um, story. It was inspired by Children of Blood and Bone as well as the Black Panther. And I'm excited for it. I just. The, author, the cover looks so cool and the author seems like a genuinely cool person from what I know about her so I'm very excited to read this one. May 2020 again if you want to bookmark it, I don't know. The next one again, I saw the cover and the cover was really beautiful so I decided to go read up what the book is about and what I read up, it sounded really interesting to me so that it's Now That I Found You by Christina Forrest. 18-year-old Evie Jones is poised to be Hollywood's next big movie star following the steps, the footsteps of her uber-famous grandma, Evelyn Conaway. That is, until a friend's betrayal ultimately leads to Evie being fired and blacklisted. A public appearance with Evelyn Conway, aka Gigi, is just the thing to save Evie's floundering career, but the week Evie plans to present Gigi with a major award, award in front of Hollywood's lead, Gigi, a recluse who's been out of the limelight for almost 20 years, disappears. With time running out and her comeback on the line, Evie reluctantly enlists the help of the last person to see Gigi before she disappears, Myla Williams, a cute musician whom Evie isn't, true, isn't sure she can trust, as Evie and Myla spend a wild week together in New York City searching for Gigi, romance and adventure abound. And Evie makes some new discoveries about Gigi, but most importantly about herself. Um, so I think this is a young adult contemporary, and just by reading the synopsis, it's giving me like Evelyn Hugo vibes, you know, like this um, older celebrity, so I'm really excited to see like, just hearing it, it sounds like Evelyn Hugo. I liked Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this sounds like it, so I'm excited to see if it will actually remind me of, um, of that book. If it doesn't, it's also fine, but that's just the reason that I'm hyped. And this one comes out June 2020. Okay, the next one is by an author that I think many of you have read before. Many people have read it. And that is the new book by Elizabeth Acevedo, and it is called Clap When You Land. And I know Elizabeth Acevedo as a author. So I saw her new book and I was like, that looks actually just so stunning and I really want to read it as well. This one comes out in May of next year. Oh, it comes out on May 14th. I will remember it. Camino Rios lives for the summers when her father visits her in the Dominican Republic. But this time on the day when his plane is supposed to land, Camino arrives at the airport to see crowds of crying people. In New York City, Yajaira Rios is called to the principal's office where her mother is waiting to tell her that her father, her hero, has died in a plane crash. Separated by distance and puppy secrets, the two girls are forced to face a new reality in which their father is dead and their lives are forever altered. And then, when it seems like they've lost everything for their father, they learn of each other. Puppy's death uncovers all, all the painful truths he kept hidden and the love he divided across an ocean. And now, Camino and Yahaira are both left to grapple with to grapple with what this new system means to them and what it will now take to keep their dreams alive. In a dual narrative novel, in verse that brings off both grief and love, award-winning and best-selling author Elizabeth Azevedo writes about the devastation of loss, the difficulty of forgiveness, and the bittersweet bonds that shape our lives. I am so excited for this book. If you don't know, um, Elizabeth Azevedo is also the author of The Poet X and The Fire on High. This sounds incredible, the fact that it's about two sisters finding each other. I think that's something I really like. I love reading my families, especially sisters, in books. And I think this one is a, it's a stance that I haven't read before because these sisters don't know of each other's existence before their father passes away. So I'm really excited to read this one. May cannot come sooner. The next one we're going to be talking about, okay, also I need to mention that these books are mentioned in no particular order because this one has probably been mentioned like second last because I'm super hyped for it. And that is One of Us is Next by Karen N. McManus. <laughs> And she's the author of a few books that I really like, such as One of Us is Lying and Two Can Keep a Secret. Um, so this is the second book in the... I don't know if it's called One of Us is Lying, if that's going to be the name of the series. I also don't know how many books are in the series, but this is the next one. So the first one were about like five kids. It was like three, think like Breakfast Club vibes. <laughs> but it's about these four, five people in detention. One dies and everyone is a suspect and it's a very like it's a fun like mystery type of crime not crime like a mystery thriller novel kind of thing but i had fun reading it and then i read um mcmanus the second book two of us can, um, two can keep a secret which i absolutely loved it had the best ending of a book that i've ever read 
Well, maybe not the best. Oh, I actually, I think it was pretty epic for like it was so epic for a book to end that way, and I absolutely loved it. So I'm really excited for the next one. So I kind of don't want to tell you what it's about because I'm worried that this might spoil a few things for the first book. But just know, I am hyped for this book to come, and I cannot wait. Yeah, okay, I've been reading like the synopsis trying to figure out if I can tell you what it's about, but I really don't think I should do that because it definitely will spoil at least some things for the first book. So I'm just gonna just gonna be like, you can decide if you want to read it. But it comes out in January of 2020, so I actually need to start I actually need to order it now. <laughs> I need to go order it today. Okay, whatever. I just, I realized it's coming out in January. Damn, I'm so excited. Sorry. <laughs> the next one, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I requested an arc of this one on Net Galley and I just I was never denied or accepted so I'm just hanging in the air there so maybe one day I'll be accepted or maybe I'll just wait for the actual book to come out and that book is Jane Anonymous by Laurie Var Varia Stolars anyway this book also comes out in January next year and it is about Jane <laughs> let me read you the synopsis then Jane was your typical 17 year old in a typical New England, England suburb getting ready to start her senior year. She had a part time job she enjoyed, an awesome best friend, overbearing but loving parents, and a crush on a boy who was taking her to see her favorite band. She never would have imagined that in her own town, when nothing ever happens, a series of small coincidences would lead to a devastating turn of events that would forever change her life. Now, it's been three years since Jane escaped captivity and returned home. Three months of being that girl who was kidnapped, the girl was held by a monster. Three months of writing down everything she remembered from those seven months locked up in a stark white room. But what if everything you know, you thought you knew, everything you thought you experienced, turned out to be a lie? It is a young adult contemporary book and it comes out in January next year. So I'm really excited for it. I see this is, this is also again a book that a few of my friends or people that I follow have marked to read. The next one is by, by an author that I read and I absolutely loved. Um, one of her books that I read, which was The Female of the Species, is one of my new favorite books, so I'm so excited to read this next book by Mindy McGuinness. This book I was attracted to because I saw the I saw Mindy McGuinness was writing a new book and I was obviously very excited about it because I absolutely loved The Female of the Species. But some of I think the previous books that she's written that she's written, the synopsis didn't really interest me as much, but this one definitely did. It looks it's also a young adult book, young adult contemporary, but it sounds as if, like it has a bit of a thriller element as well. And it's called be not far from me. The world is not tame. Ashley knows this truth deep in her bones, more at home with trees overhead than a roof. So when she goes hiking in the Smokies with her friends for another party, the falling dark the falling dark and creaking trees are second nature to her. But people are not tame either, and when Ashley catches her boyfriend with another girl, drunken rage sends her running into the night, stopped only by a nasty fall into a ravine. Morning brings the realization that she's alone and far off trail. Lost in undisturbed forest, and with nothing but the clothes on her back, Ashley must figure out how to survive despite the red streak of infection creeping up her leg. <sighs> I'm so excited for this book to come out. It sounds terrifying, but also... <laughs> I'm so excited about it. Um, it comes out in March 2020, so actually I need to find out if I can start ordering this one as well. <laughs> Please send money guys, please send money. This next book, um, I saw the cover and it had a brown girl on the cover. Just the fact that I saw a brown girl on this made me want to read this book. And I don't know if that's problematic on my part or... I'm just being honest, I don't know when I put this in, but that's what made me really want to read this book. The main character is from Mexico, so she's Mexican. This one is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia and it comes out in June of 2020. From the author of Gods of Jade and Shadow comes a reimagining about the classic gothic suspense novel, a story about an isolated mansion in 1950s Mexico and the brave socialite drawing to its treacherous streets. He's trying to poison me. You must come for me, Naomi. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging for someone to save her from a mysterious doom, Naomi Tabora heads to a high place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. She's not sure what she will find. Her cousin's husband, a handsome Englishman, is a stranger, and Naomi knows little about the region. Numi is also an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante and her chic gowns and perfect red lipstick are more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough, smart and has an indomitable will and she's not afraid, not of her cousin's new husband who is both menacing and alluring, not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems to be fascinated by Naomi. Numi? 
and not even the house itself, which begins to invade Numi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Her only ally in this inhospitable abode is the family's youngest son. Shy and gentle, he seems to want to help Numi, but might also be hiding dark knowledge of his family's past, for they have been for there have been many secrets behind the walls of High Place. The family's once colossal wealth and faded mining empire kept them from prying eyes, but as Numi digs deeper, she unearths stories of violence and madness. And Numi, mesmerized by the terrifying yet seductive world of High Place, may soon find it impossible to ever leave this enigmatic house behind. Okay, so this is an adult book. Um, it's a historical, a gothic fantasy type of book. So I'm so excited about it. I'm definitely probably going to check out some of the author's previous works. I've never read anything by this author, so this will be the first book. But I might go and check out some of the other things just before before June. June's far. Okay, the last one that I'm going to be talking about, well, kind of the last one, is the one that I think everyone is very hyped for, I believe. Everyone has marked this to read and I think everyone is just waiting for this book to come out. So, your girl, Suzanne Collins, was just gone for years after she gave us The Hunger Games and then she disappeared. I know she wrote another series, but I mean, I don't know what that series is about, but Hunger Games is my main focus, my priority, because Hunger Games was life when it came out. And now she's giving us another world book in this world. And I'm pretty sure you all know about it. So that is A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. And this only comes out in May 2020. I know there are books on this list that comes out e that come out even after that. But I'm so freaking excited for this one. And there's... <sighs> okay, I need to calm down. We only got the name like a few weeks ago, I'll say. Not even months. Maybe like a month or two ago. And before that I just knew Suzanne Collins was releasing a new book and we just had to wait to find out what it was about. The synopsis is still not released. All that it says on Goodreads is the ballad of songbirds and snakes will revisit the world of Pan Am 64 years before the events of the Hunger Games starting on the morning of the reaping of the 10th Hunger Games. So everyone has pretty much guessed that this will be about Megs, Mags from who we meet in Catching Fire so I'm just so hyped for this book. That is definitely my number one most hyped book of 2020. I will have to let you know though. The cover, I don't know how I feel about the cover. I don't know if I actually absolutely love it or am I like, mm, I don't like it. I don't know why I'm on the cover. But everything else about the book. So, I'm so excited. I'm so hyped. This video will probably be very long. I'm very sorry for that. But we are at the end now. Um, there is one more thing that I'm very excited about but we've not received any dates for that. And that is the third book in the Legacy of Arisha series by Tomita Yemis. The third book is supposed to be coming out 2020. I don't know if that will happen, but if it does, expect it to be hyped. By me. I'm the hyper, the hype man. So this is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hoped I could let you know about some few books that might sound interesting. If you are also super hyped for one of these, please let me know. And also let me know which other books you are hyped for. Because it's always good to, you know, find out what the new books are. So please leave it down in the comments below and thank you so much for watching this video. I love you. Please subscribe and have a good day. Like I don't I hope you're happy. I don't I love you. Bye. <laughs>